On the line with us, our old friend, Dr. Michael Mann, the Distinguished Professor of Meteorology and Director of the Earth Systems Science Center at Penn State University, author of several books, including The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. He's the inventor of the hockey stick, that, that giant lurch up in carbon dioxide that Al Gore, uh, you know, that made Al Gore famous. This is the guy who actually invented the, the, the concept. You can tweet him at Michael E. Mann, his website, Michael Mann, with two N's, M-A-N-N, dot net. Uh, Dr. Mann, welcome back to the program. Uh, thanks, Tom. Always good to be with you. So the uh, IPCC, in response to a to a query, this wasn't their normal five year report. This was in response to an inquiry from the uh, from some of these island nations that are uh, looking at the possibility of extinction, essentially, you know, vanishing uh, under the yeah. waters. Uh, ask them, you know, is this is this a, you know goal of keeping temperatures below uh, what was it two degrees was the original to Celsius. Uh, originally two degrees Celsius, and, and this they're looking at an even lower target here, right, of 1.5. Right. Yep. Right. So they said, you know, uh, what would the consequences be if we if we lowered the goal? And this whole new bunch of research in the last couple of years came out, and it's kind of head exploding. Tell us what, uh, summarize it for us, please. Sure. Well, there are a lot of reasons to believe that uh, two degrees Celsius warming of the planet is a whole lot worse than one and a half degrees Celsius which is a whole lot worse than the one degree Celsius we've already warmed. And the, uh, the issue here really um, has to do, for example, with how close are we uh, to the collapse of substantial parts of the, uh, the, the major ice sheets, the West Antarctic ice sheet, the Greenland ice sheet. Um, if those ice sheets continue to uh, lose ice, um, as they have been doing, then it may be indeed too late for many of these low-lying island nations. The amount of sea level rise that we'll see over the next several decades will literally submerge some of these islands. So they have reason to be worried uh, about any additional warming. And whereas two degrees Celsius warming is the target that has largely been adopted um, uh, in, in these discussions uh, for defining dangerous interference with the climate, for these low-lying island nations, you know, one and a half degrees Celsius is, is catastrophic. For many of the regions that are suffering uh, unprecedented droughts and heat waves and wildfires, we've already warmed a, a dangerous amount. And so it's really a question of how far down this dangerous highway are we willing to go? Yeah. And, and, uh, and how far are we willing to go, apparently? Well, in the absence of uh, any, you know, uh, mitigation and, it, you know, if we pursue business as usual, burning of fossil fuels and warm the planet by four to five Celsius at seven to nine Fahrenheit by the end of the century, then we will see a truly devastating climate change impacts. The, the, the summer, the devastating summer of 2018 with the wildfires and floods and the super storms we've seen this fall, <clears throat> most recently, my namesake, Michael, yeah. devastating storm that's uh, the the strongest storm uh, ever to uh landfall uh, uh the u.s coastline this late in the season um you know that's that we will that will be par for the course and we'll see, see far more devastating um extreme weather events hurricanes massive sea level rise and flooding um that's a world that we certainly don't want to live in we don't want our children and grandchildren to live in um if we you know curtail our burning of fossil fuels dramatically in, in the years ahead, we can still avoid warming the planet more than two degrees Celsius. And we certainly don't want to warm it any more than that. Uh, the Paris Agreement um, basically gets us halfway from that four to five Celsius, seven to nine Fahrenheit warming uh, down to the two degree Celsius warming that pretty much everybody agrees we want to uh, keep warming below. Uh, the Paris Agreement uh, commitments get us about halfway there. That means we still have work to do. Well, this, this, this report is essentially calling for a massive reduction within the next 10 to 12 years. Um, can, you, can you give us the, the, the specifics that they're calling for in terms of reductions? And, you know, having established that it'll be a disaster if we don't do this, I mean, we've got several Republicans now who have come out and said, uh, literally, I've made fun of it. I mean, you know, uh, 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 three members, three Republican members of Congress in the last 24 hours, one of them made the comment, uh, you know, it would take all the money in the world to do this, which is BS. Um, you know, another made a similar comment. Um, what, what specifically are they saying we have to do and we have to start doing right now? 
Yeah, and of course, it, it is a disingenuous talking point to say it will co- cost us dearly to act because the reality is it will cost us uh, dearly to not act. <laughs> well, and it already is. I mean, look at Hurricane Michael. Yeah. Well, a- absolutely. And and the devastating extreme weather events, um, the wildfires and droughts and floods that we've seen this summer, um, already the, the cost of inaction is so much greater than the cost of actually taking action. And so that is a disingenuous talking point. And, and it's predictable. The forces of denial are out in force trying to distract the public and policymakers in the, in the wake of this devastating new IPCC report. And here's the irony, Tom. Um, this report is overly conservative, as the IPCC reports over, uh, always are. And in terms of the, the budget of carbon, how much carbon do we have left that we can burn and still avoid warming the planet more than that dangerous two degrees Celsius warming? Um, we have argued that the, 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 the number that the IPCC is using is probably a factor of two too large, uh, and mm. in part because what it gets into some of the details here, um, the way they measure how much the planet has warmed, um, uh, obviously you need to define what the baseline is. What is the pre-industrial baseline? Now, they use the late, uh, the late 1800s to define the pre-industrial baseline, but the globe had already warmed several tenths of a degree Celsius in response to greenhouse gas emissions that occurred before the late 19th century. So if you use a more realistic definition of what was the pre-industrial climate, we're actually even closer to two degrees Celsius, and we have even less carbon that we can afford to burn. So what do the numbers say? We've got to bring our carbon emissions down by between five and 10 percent a year over the next uh, two decades and basically bring them down to zero if we're going to avoid warming the planet more than that dangerous two degrees Celsius warming. Right. And this, and this, by the way, would create millions of jobs. I mean, it would be an explosion for the clean energy industry, you know, rebuilding our power grids, re- solarizing every house in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just, it, it would be such an incredible economic opportunity. But the fossil fuel barons would take a hit. The billionaires, the Koch brothers, the, the, uh, the uh, stockholders of ExxonMobil and whatnot, they would all take a hit. And, uh, you know, therefore, they're fighting it tooth and nail. It's, it's just absolutely absolutely bizarre yeah no i mean the, the, the great the great lie you know has been that um we you know that uh we you know we can't make this transition it'll hurt the economy uh when in fact uh the rest of the world has moved on the rest of the world is moving on they recognize that the future of the global uh, economy is in renewable energy and the more we continue to remain fixated uh, on fossil fuels, the farther we as a nation fall behind the rest of the world. And you're right. You know, there's some coal barons and and fossil fuel, um, you know, uh, companies that stand to profit um, uh, the longer we stay addicted to fossil fuels. But the rest of us and the planet lose out. Right. Let's talk for a moment about the the actual impacts of this. Um, You know, I uh, have... Uh, been accused of having my hair on fire around these issues in the past, particularly when I talk about uh, mass extinctions, you know, the, the revisiting the Permian. But uh, let's talk about just, you know, kind of a middle point here, civilization. We're, we have already seen, as a, as a, I believe, as a consequence of global warming, and please reality check me on this, we've seen the desert move south, uh, I believe it's over 100 miles in the last uh, two decades in the in the northern part of Africa and the Middle East. Um, yeah. and, and the consequence of that was, you know, farmers being wiped out, moving into the big cities, yeah. uh, the big cities then becoming unstable in countries like Syria, Libya, Egypt, uh, and so forth. And uh, leading to what was referred to as the Arab Spring, apparently it was provoked by by climate change. That then you've got all these refugees flowing into Europe at a rate that is difficult for the Europeans to assimilate, which is producing a right wing backlash. So now we've had several governments in Europe, Poland, Hungary, uh, you know, uh, Italy, maybe on the edge of this, f- uh, f- basically flipping from democracy to strongman autocracy, uh, you yeah. know, rejecting democracy. Uh, yeah. and, and, and then in other parts of the world, Bangladesh, uh, you know, some parts of uh, northern India, we're seeing, you know, just massive movements of people, millions and millions of people moving in as a consequence of climate change. At what point, so clearly, A, it's already destructive to democracy, this fragile form of governance that we've kind of evolved over the last couple hundred years, and B... At, uh, a, 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 you know, tell me if you agree with everything I just said, and, and then if so, B, at what point do we say this actually endangers civilization? Yeah, 
Well, you know, these uh, granola chewing radicals known as the Pentagon um, and uh, four star generals are our uh, national security community. Um, they are firmly on record uh, in terms of the threat that they see in climate change. They describe it as a threat multiplier. It takes existing uh, competition for diminishing resources and and it increases that competition and it creates conflict. And, and you can connect the dots between this epic drought in Syria and uh, the uh, organization, the terrorist organization ISIS that arose in that atmosphere of, of conflict and instability. Um, so it's, you know, even if you dismiss climate change for all the other reasons, if you're a national security hawk, um, you ought to care uh, about climate change because it is our greatest national security threat. And, and our armed forces understand that. And our national security uh, community understands that. The Pentagon understands that. Uh, many of our business leaders understand that as well um, because they, you know, lose out um, in an unstable uh, econ world economy. So, you know, it, it, it used to be the case that climate change was sort of thought of as a, you know, an issue that only the uh, environmental left uh, cares about or should care about. But it doesn't matter where you are on the, the political spectrum. The impacts of climate change are already very real. They're hurting all of us, and we should all care regardless of our politics. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is serious stuff. This is very serious stuff and we need to treat it as such. Dr. Michael Mann, his, new, his latest book, The Madhouse Effect. Uh, what was the title of your book about the, the hockey stick? Uh, the Hockey Stick and the Climate War. The Hockey Stick and the Climate War. That, that, was, that was absolutely brilliant. Dr. Michael Mann, michaelmann.net. Thank you so, so much for being with us, sir. Thank you, Tom, always a pleasure. Great talking with you. We'll be back. You too.